I choose you, Retro Encounter! Welcome everyone to Retro Encounter! <laughs> 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 I'm your host, Josh Curry. Is it too uh, soon to quit this podcast? <laughs> that's Mike Solosi. Josh? Josh Hi, everybody. Be the very best, like no one ever was. Uh, and that's Peter Driesenberg. Hi, I'm Peter Driesenberg. We also have Marcos Gaspar. Hey there. <laughs> and Chris Kabauer. Hey, everyone. Um, so, if you did not guess from that terrible intro, um, <laughs> this month we are playing Pokemon, but we figured, unlike the other months that we've done stuff, we kind of added a special twist. Instead of all of us playing the same game, all of us are playing the same series, but different color. Of Pokemon for everything. It's gonna be so confusing. <laughs> this this first five minutes is gonna be confusing. After that, we're gonna talk big ideals. I think we'll be okay. So I played the most recent. I'm in the 3DS. I'm playing Pokemon X. I believe Marcos, you're playing Pokemon Black too. <clears throat> yep. Mike is playing Pokemon Red and Platinum. Yeah, it's, I wanted to compare and contrast the first generation with the fourth generation, which yeah is taking a lot of time, but is sort of interesting in, in execution. Peter, you're playing Soul Silver. Yep, Gen 4 remake of a Gen 2 game. So, looking forward to seeing how that turns out. And then Chris is playing, well, played Yellow and is currently playing Sapphire. Yeah, pretty much. So, I feel like an underachiever because I'm only playing one game. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think we actually have every generation covered. We're um, oh, we're missing Gold and Silver. Wait, yeah, no, because we have Soul Silver, so we're fine. Yeah, yeah. well, story-wise, it'll it's the end. Sort of content-wise, it's a Gen Two game, but it has Gen Four mechanics and Gen Four everything else. It's, but 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 basic in terms of you know what gems each person is going through, we have all six gens covered. Yeah, so we're close enough. I'm 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 okay with that. <laughs> um, so I think <sighs> this is gonna be a mess. Um, I think we're just gonna start off with. Obviously, all of us have played this game, right? All, po yes. all Pokemon game? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I should yes. have asked that before we start the show. It's, it's one of those things you just kind of assume. Everybody at some point has played a Pokemon game. So, let's, let's start off with everybody's histories with the series. This is... For, I'll start off, because I'm already gone. This is a game that's really close to home for me. This is, hands down, my first RPG. Um, it was an RPG before I even realized it was an RPG. Which I feel like happened to a lot of kids my age. And I got a gift from my grandmother. She's like, oh, kid, like so-and-so was talking about this, so I got you a Game Boy Color in this game. And I opened it up, and there was a big Pikachu on it, and I, I started with uh, Pokemon Yellow. And that's that was like my intro, first of all, to basically Nintendo, since I was like a little, little kid. And then also to Pokemon and RPGs as a whole. So this kind of crafted who I was as a gamer, so it means a lot to me. I, I don't want to... I didn't want to interrupt the touching story, but you had me confused for a second because I thought you were still talking about Pokemon X. No, 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 no. Pokemon Yellow. Yeah. Like... So, so in between Yellow and your current playthrough of X, which po uh, other Pokemon games did you play? Every single one. Oh, okay. Um, All right. <laughs> I've played... I started with Yellow, which is still, I think... Yellow and Gold are my two favorite Pokemons of all time. Um, but I went yellow, red, blue, gold. Shoot, I'm going to start screwing stuff up. Oh, actually, I think I went silver instead of gold. Um, well, we get the idea. You, play, yeah. you played all of them. I you, rolled you, through you all of them. You don't need to list your every color. <laughs> I don't know. You, you asked. I thought you were interested. Sure. Well, I mean, as much as in, I'm interested in anything about you. You just want me listing a bunch of colors off? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. So Violet. Before I just keep going, like, why don't we kind of... You, Mike, you want to keep talking, so go ahead. Oh, let's hear your. Okay. <laughs> sure. Well, I'm I'm a few years older than you, Josh. So, uh, Pokemon was not my first RPG. I but I did get in through the front door. Basically, I think I was maybe 11 or so when when Red and Blue came out, and I uh, started playing those, and I got really hooked, and then I moved on right uh, right on to Gold and Silver, and played. Uh, I think I had silver and played that right when it came out but then i was sort of burned out on pokemon i didn't play any of the third generation stuff right away but when i was in college i had a very slow boring job as a night watchman for about two years 
And, you know, I, I, I basically spent half of my time patrolling and half of my time sitting in a room watching uh, camera feeds. So naturally, I decided, you know what, I'll, I have this GBA. I'll, I'll start playing the, <laughs> the Pokemon games I missed. And so when I, when I had the, this really boring night job where I sat around a lot, I played through Leaf Green and Emerald and then got Diamond right when it came out and played that. And then imported all of my stuff from that Leaf Green and Emerald file into Diamond. So my Pokemon Diamond file is insane. I think there's, I think there's like 490 some Pokemon in that generation. And my Pokedex, my Pokedex, Pokedex. for Diamond, <laughs> Pokedex. <laughs> my Pokedex for Diamond has like 480 or so. Jeez, nice. So, uh, yeah. Then I, uh, then I. Just got a little burned out. I uh, received White 2 as a gift a few years ago and played that, and I have not played X or Y or the remakes of <clears throat> Beer and Sapphire. Yeah, I think everybody at some point kind of gets burnt out on it. Yeah, um, well, I mean, sort of the, the gimmick of this episode is that structurally the Pokemon games are so similar that we can each play a different one and have, you know... And basically have this uh, the same conversation about it. Right, it's just the same damn game over and over again. And that was a uh, part of the reason, like when we were kind of concepting this out. I, like immediately, was like I have to play X or Y. Um, like I respected what they did with Black and Black Two. I liked that there was some sort of narrative sequel to that. Um, but I needed to play something that had a different feel to it, and we'll get to it later. But I, I think X for me at least did a really good good job. X gonna give it to you. Sure. So, uh, so, po- so, Marcos, what's your Pokemon background? <laughs> um. So, my question is: Everyone like received the Pokemon promotional video on VHS as a kid? No. no. All right. No. I did, I, not. I did not. No one did. You know, I think one of my friends did, and I did see it at his house. Cause yeah. This sounds familiar, but I did not own it. Yeah, where it's like a just one big just like Pokemon uh promo for uh the series in the cartoon show. Uh, I think it was in fifth grade when I received it, and that's where I, I entered the series, right at Red and Blue. In fact, my grandfather bought me both Red and Blue, and like the strategy guide was like all those stickers and oh. stuff in the back. Uh, so I've been with it since the beginning, however. Um, I didn't play heart, uh, Gold, Silver, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald. I think I jumped back again at Diamond and Pearl by playing Pearl, uh, then played Black 2, then played Black uh, Pokemon White, and then um, Pokemon uh, Y after that. And I mean, out of all of them, I think my favorite one is probably uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and say this. I think it was Pokemon Black too that I really like, ended up being my favorite of the series. Even though uh, I had strong ties to uh, Red and Blue, uh, right from the get go. Yeah, yeah. The the hard part is like so. I said the numbers. I was eight when I played Pokemon Yellow. I like I was that target age of hey here's this game oh by the way you're watching the Saturday morning cartoons you should watch this too and it quickly just destroys your life because it's like all encompassing of every time you're doing some sort of entertainment like function you're Pokemon was there by this yeah. yeah yeah Pokemon crossed over several different mediums <laughs> yeah the TCG yeah. game also which even though no one actually played it they just collected the cards for the most part was, and, at, the, was at recess so I, even at school it was everywhere so I actually played the game I, 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 was, not, I, I went the, deep. I did not play the Pokemon TCG I, was, I tried to play the TCG I the for some reason the rules never stick with me and the okay. card game for I think it was the Game Boy Color or whatever yeah, yep. yeah. yeah. really really good game um and that might be why i like hearthstone so much i have no idea but i was deep like i embarrassing so like you could go they had uh for the first movie if you showed up they gave you a card yeah yeah i went to <laughs> I that movie that. i don't think uh, i've seen I, any I went, of i, I, I have the... seen i've seen a lot of the pokemon anime from when it was first airing but i don't think i've seen any of the movies Even yeah they're, probably, they're terrible probably, they're probably they're so at least bad. a dozen by now they're so they're bad bad I I couldn't tell you, and, I, and I've watched some terrible anime movies before. I'm not I'm not I'm not went, saying I'm, I'm not saying I'm above them. I'm just saying I haven't I, seen them. I went to Yu-Gi-Oh! the movie for the same reason, just to get the trading it, cards. So and this is how you know it's so bad because you're like a little kid and everything's good at that age. And I I remember yeah. leaving and my mom came and picked me up. She's like, "Oh, what'd you think?" I was like, "Uh, well, I got this card." <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it wasn't that terrible. <laughs> the first, the first 
three Pokemon movies are decent, but I don't know. I, I stopped it. after that. They didn't offer I, any more cards, so I wasn't gonna go. Sorry, Peter. I'm, I don't think I'm gonna go out of my way to see him now. Now that I'm almost thirty. <laughs> but we'll have uh, a mar- we'll have a marathon one of these days. It'll be fun. Sounds healthy. I like it. Don't don't include me in that we. But sure, go ahead. So what about you, Peter? How, what's your um, kind of history? So I was six when I got into Pokemon. Um, We're trying to see who can be the youngest. <laughs> it's gonna be um, Peter. It's not me. Probably, honestly. So I yeah, was in. I, think I was in. You and I are about the same age, right, Marcos? No, we're not having this conversation. Uh, Keep going, Peter. Okay, all right. Sorry, sorry, guys. Go ahead, Peter. I mean, I was in I was in first grade, and I didn't own a gaming system at the time. But um, the anim- I was getting really into the cartoon show, and the second movie came out, so I I had like this like guidebook for it and stuff, and I was yeah. kind of I was right I was in that age group for it. Um, I would play Pokemon Stadium at a friend's house on his N sixty four, which was kind of my first exposure to the Pokemon video games. Hmm. And so it was just the combat system, but I would play, um, he had the, uh, the transfer pack so he could use his red and his Pokemon red team in Pokemon stadium. So I knew there were other games. I just wasn't like fully cognizant of how, of how the series worked, um, until, uh, the Game Boy Advance came out actually. And then that's when I picked up, um, Sapphire version and, uh that started playing the games myself um i got really into that and fire red version and i was when i was in elementary school i made i mean i think uh, i I, pokemon was a pretty like central part of my childhood like i made a lot of friends because of it like i used to play pretend with one of my friends um who lived down the street from me (laughs) we used to pretend to be pokemon trainers i'm outing myself now i was one of those kids you didn't pretend you were pokemon (laughs) no that's weird dude (laughs) nobody does that you don't, yeah, nobody, who who nobody. wants to be wandering around doing whatever they're doing and then have somebody throw a ball at them and have them be enslaved inside that ball the rest of their life? That sounds terrible. So you didn't want to be like Hitmochan or Hitmonlee and just like kick and punch stuff? Nah. And if it I was going to do anything, I would be a Charmander, let's be honest. It could be The Pokeballs could be super comfortable. You never know. Like tiny little like lounge suites or I, something. I know this is terrible. These are, These are questions I don't think. The, uh, I know this is terrible. I like to think of it just being like... <laughs> Four like stone walls with like dripping <laughs> water in the background <laughs> and this like crappy oh, stained mat on the ground. <laughs> so, so what you're saying is that we're training these Pokemon to celebrate the fact that we let them out to fight, and that's why they love you so much because, because... you're letting them out of this bondage. What do you, what do you, so you know, like when you look back at like Looney Tunes <laughs> cartoons, yeah. and you you look mm-hmm. at like Pepe Le Pew and stuff, and it's like that Where's stuff is going? that stuff is twisted, mm-hmm. like. Nobody should be chasing around a cat like that. Like that—that that is borderline inappropriate. Borderline. Like, I'm going with a borderline, which is for right, us. Okay, sure. It's, it's the same thing for this. This is terrible. You know, okay, these are, it's these funny are questions. Should... Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> it, it's funny you should mention that because um, in in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and that they reintroduced the the peak the where Pikachu follows you behind in Yellow version. Yeah. Um. The lead Pokemon in your party always follows you in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, oh, and this is, to, and to my knowledge, out, outside of Yellow Version, this is the only time they ever retain that mechanic, and it actually does improve your like friendship with that Pokemon, that they're not trapped in their tiny little metallic That's prison. Terrible in there. No way. It's, it's really comfortable in there. I mean, like that robot chicken episode where it's like really comfortable with all the sofas <laughs> and carpet oh, and all those Pokemon okay. girls. I mean, and I <laughs> love, I love that when you have the squirrel being like Squirtle, Squirtle, Squirtle. <laughs> Damn it! I'm not gonna say this word anymore. Quiet, Tom. I'll give you the gas. Just say the line. <laughs> <laughs> so even even if we're gonna agree that it's comfortable inside this ball, yeah. let's, for argument's sake. They're still being shrunk to one hundredth the size. That cannot feel good to be just mashed together so. and then stretched out. It is I'm magic. Sure they're converted Josh. into energy or some crap. I don't know. No. I think it's like honey. So I'm it looks the in the show. Sounds it's terrible. Magic, and you should believe in magic. Oh, not, not today. But to just to wrap up to wrap up my uh, my my Pokemon journey really quick. <laughs> I skipped mo- I, I skipped most of Gen Four. Um, came because I was in high school and Pokemon wasn't cool anymore. Um, then I decided that to be a nerd again. That was why again. I skipped Gen 3. 
Yeah. <laughs> and then I picked up, I got, I borrowed my friend's copy of Black, made it like halfway through it, didn't finish it. Um, I kind of want to, cause I, I do, there are a lot of things in that gen that I liked, but then I got um, X and Y and now I'm fully back in on the Pokemon bus. So, yay. Yeah. I think X is a great refresher. It's like a palate cleanser for the series. It really reinvigorated my interest in the series. And I get, and there are some like, gripes people have um that are valid like with the how it's kind of lacking some post some post game content but i think it was just like the shot in the arm the series needed yeah. but i i enjoy it so uh, i think chris is next yeah, right? yeah yeah so uh similar to a bunch of you guys i got uh blue when it came out so i was eight and mm-hmm. i absolutely loved the game I got all the way to Victory Road, and I remember then uh, a cousin, I was at a cousin's house, and we were playing it, and left my Game Boy behind, and then got it back a few days later, and uh, my younger cousin didn't understand the whole saving over your file. There weren't multiple saves, because he was used to PC gaming. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, I didn't really play a Pokemon game for a very long time after that. I was a little traumatized by that event kid uh like i just i really could not handle the fact that i had to do all of it over again after i put in so much time i'd actually caught a zapdos and that took me forever and i i was i i just think thinking about going through it again i just couldn't do it and then i didn't have another nintendo handheld until the ds so i didn't play another pokemon game until black and white and i played black but I also played that after the fact, because for a long time, I had nothing against Pokemon. I didn't think it was lame. I mean, I was doing plenty of other much nerdier things, but <laughs> far too many. So it had nothing to do with that. I just, I had, I was always occupied in something else. And I remember one day just walking to a store and just being like, screw it. It's been forever. I want to play it. And this was right when uh, X and Y had been announced. And so I played Black, absolutely loved it. And then went back and was and hunted down a copy of Yellow, which is the copy I've been playing for this podcast. Played that afterwards, and then unfortunately, because I had just done, I just played through two games when X and Y did come out. I really liked X, which is the copy I have, but about halfway through, I was like, I've done too much of this right now. I need to give it a break. And so, those are the three games I've played, or four, I guess now, including Yellow. And uh, and then also trying Sapphire because uh, I wanted to see kind of the a, a, a much better a much prettier 2D version of Pokemon because I'd gone from blue to then the kind of 3D models. Mm-hmm. It, is, really it is interesting how this series has grown like over the years. To be honest, like we we say it's like the same game every time, and to an extent the structure is the same. But there there's always been like some yeah exactly. Yeah, there's new mechanical wrinkles and improved mm-hmm. technology and way more extras with each new Pokemon game. But, I mean, like you said a second ago, it's really the structure and the the sort of the story and how the quest is set up that's the same with each game. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, if, if I mean my, I don't know if I mentioned this before, my favorite Pokemon was Gold. Absolutely. Because, because my mind was blown when you you beat the game and suddenly you get eight more gems yep. and a, a new final boss battle. That's the only That's game. Two, awesome. You got two games in there. Yeah, well, eh, not, not really. It's more like kind one of. and a half. Yeah. It, it's, but it's, in, uh, but it's it, more it's in just, depth in Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver. In Heart, yeah, Gold, and Soul, Silver. They, and they, the game just feels yeah. bigger than any other game because in every other one, it's just. You know, eight gyms, elite four, and then maybe you can play the elite four again. I mean, yeah, and that's it's yeah, that's what everybody wanted. Like anybody that was watching the cartoon, I'm gonna call it a cartoon. It's not an anime to me. Um, <laughs> but uh, you 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 watch Ash as he goes through, and he like goes through all the colors, and he's an idiot because he always lets his Pokemon go. But he, and he's like immor- an immortal child. Yeah, but <laughs> but like. It's one of those things you wanted to have that same... Like, everybody always says, oh, I really want a Pokemon MMO. Which, yes. And you want a Pokemon that you can catch every Pokemon in. And that that Gold and Silver were the only times that it had that feeling of, like, the show of, like, I wrap this up, I move on to Season 2. And 
it was the first time that it, it was truly like it took the old game and included that. And I, I, it's kind of terrible because because of that, like the series peaks to me right there. Like yellow will always be the best, but I can make the argument for gold or silver being better. And as soon as I got the like the next generation, I couldn't like move on and collect my old Pokemon and like go through that. Like that was a huge negative for me. Yeah. Um, and I've sure. I mean, I've, I've come played. Back. I've played. I guess eight or nine Pokemon games across the first five generations. Again, I've never played a Gen Six game, but and I honestly can say I've enjoyed all the ones I played, even though it's always a really familiar setup. Because every time I play a new one, it's there's enough wrinkles and enough new Pokemon that it it's a new enough experience that you know when I'm ready to play a Pokemon game, there's one I haven't played that I can play. It's yeah. I, I I understand the criticism that they're all too similar, but if you're invested into the into the you know the I guess the ritual of what Pokemon is, then there's something new to enjoy in each one. So I uh, I, I don't want to sound like a hater that my favorite one is the one from '99 or 2000, <laughs> but it but Pokemon has especially you know mechanically and content wise gotten better with each one just about. I I, uh, I I mentioned the last before that I started doing this. The last one I played was White Two. The tournament stuff at the end of White Two of White Two is so dope. I yeah, played that awesome. a little too much, and uh, and yeah, I'm I, I know I'm gonna eventually play X or Y or Omega or Alpha eventually, and I'll enjoy them when I play them because you know I, I you know what you're getting out of a Pokemon game, but it's usually pretty cool. And and I, I totally agree with what you just said, Mike. And I love that you were like, when you want a Pokemon game, like when you want that loop, you could play any of them. Yeah. And I yeah. just think that you know, like I said before, for me, if you, I just can't do a Pokemon game right after another one because yeah. of those similarities. But that's not to yeah. say it's a bad game. In fact, I still have loved even X, which I haven't finished. I've I loved it, but I just couldn't do the loop again and you know, find the same Pokemon again uh, and have them in a party and be like, you know, I need a little bit of space, but give it two months, three months, maybe a little bit, maybe a year. Yeah. The second I want to catch Pokemon, I want to have a team. I want to, you know, be focused on training them up and all the rest of it. You can pick up any of them because they're all great and they do all offer something slightly different, if yeah. not very different. So we've talked a bunch about kind of the series as a whole. Let's actually like delve into playing the game. Sure, um, like, like our current experiences yeah, playing Pokemon yeah. instead of our past experiences. Yeah. I gotcha. <laughs> so I, I kind of want to start off with the way that every game starts off and the actual starting Pokemon. Right. Do you guys have any strategies? Because I, I sure as hell do. I'm kind of interested to hear if you guys do too. I always pick the grass starter the first time I play it because my the first when I played uh, – Blue and silver back in the day. I my first ones were Bulbasaur and Chikorita, but uh, this time I, I didn't. This time I didn't. That was pick. like a, a Mexican Pokemon. <laughs> isn't, isn't that what it's called? I don't know. They're just like you put like this Spanish flair on it. <laughs> Chikorita. Uh, so uh, I, 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 I am getting the name right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You, you're, you're fine. Josh right. is just a child. You're called. good. Okay, sure. Okay. Well, whatever. But um. Uh, what? this time I this time I actually didn't pick a grass starter for each one because I've because uh, I picked the grass I picked a uh, Turtwig when I played Diamond ages ago and I hadn't tried the other two starters so for Platinum I I picked the war the water starter Piplup oh, and for okay. Red um for Red I picked Charmander because I I know he's the hardest one to start with but whatever he's on the cover of Red and he makes I, such I, a big difference in the long run yeah. Uh, not really. I think in the long run, the best one's probably Squirtle. But th this time I decided to go with Charmander basically on a whim. But my strategy is usually just throw me the grass starter and let me get started on my journey. Yeah, kind of similar to Mike. I The first time I ever played uh, with Blue, I chose Squirtle. So in my head, it's just almost a ritual to always have the, the water type. So for Sapphire, I took Mudkip. Uh, but with Yellow, don't really get a choice. And I was fine with that. Just right. got my Pikachu. See, the brilliance of yellow, though, is you eventually get everything anyways. I know. It's so great. So it just makes it easier. Ugh. That is cool. 
Um, my, my, I, I, I don't really have a strategy when it comes to picking a starter Pokemon. Um, I usually just go with which one I think looks cool. Um, <laughs> like, I'm strategy. serious. Like, well, my, fa- my favorite Gen 2 Pokemon is Totodile. Um, I, yeah. went with Cinde- I went with Cyndaquil for this playthrough because Cyndaquil and its final evolution, Typhlosion, are like OP in, in this game. They're, it's a really good Pokemon. But like, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I, I don't. I don't really have a plan. Usually, I just go with whichever starter I like first, and and try cha- to try to change it up if I replay the game. What about you, Marcos? Yeah, for myself, uh, I I think I've almost always used a uh, grass Pokemon for each uh, game. Uh, like for this one, I chose uh, Snivy for uh, my starter Pokemon. Snivy. Yeah, Snivy or Smug Leaf at, to some others. Uh, I was th- I always called it Snivy because I figured it was a snake ivy ivy snake. Oh, maybe yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, you, That's you, probably you, how you, it's yeah, it probably is. I mean, maybe I'm saying Chikorita wrong, and you're saying it right. <laughs> Chikorita. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it um, sounds like that does sound like something you'd order at, like a Taco Bell menu. Oh yeah, we'll have the Chikorita, please. With the fire sauce. <laughs> That Baja Blast Mountain Dew with it. It's super effective. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, uh, it's my strategy is usually having a strong uh, special slash defense um, type Pokemon. Generally because, I don't know, I am, they always end up being my tank characters when I try to catch a Pokemon or legendaries later on. Because you can just raise your the special defense and defense really high. So they can take a beating while you're trying to catch them. Oh god! I just right. realized fire sauce really would be super effective on a Chikorita because it's grass type. There you go. Yeah, it's the joke. Yeah. I'm sorry that, that that joke hit me like 15 seconds. Yeah, in, in the Baja Blast, like a water attack. Yeah, <laughs> it was a delayed joke. Like yeah, it's, you, no, it's like you used fly or dig or something. It's 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 really bad joke now that you explained it. So I appreciate <laughs> that. It was a bad well, joke. No, no, no. What are you talking with. about? You know, jokes are always better when you spend a full minute <laughs> explaining them afterwards. <laughs> Is it, isn't that how jokes work? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, that's exactly um, right. Right, that's what I thought. So, I, uh, I always pick fire. It's kind of a combination of kind of everybody else's reasoning. Um, I picked Charmander at the beginning when I first started off. Or, well, I guess I didn't. I picked Pikachu because I got stuck with him. Um, but Charmander was my favorite from the cartoon. So, as soon as I played uh, both Blue and Red, I, I went with Charmander. Um, and then also, like, uh, Peter, I've always thought the fire Pokemon look the best. Um, and then they kind right. of match with my playstyle, because I, I, I know I'm going to get made fun of for this. Um, so, you know, when they're like, hey, do you want to forget a move? I go in and look, how much damage does this do? And I keep the most powerful things. And if there's defense up, attack up, speed up, any of those... I drop all of those. I get rid of any nice. sort of attack that is status based. That's a legitimate way to. That that is a legitimate way to build play the game though, because while like for more advanced play, there are certain like there are certain moves or or attacks that like can be beneficial in the long run. For the most part, like a best your a, a strong offense is like yeah. is how you play Pokemon. I, I swing harder than you do, so even if you're gonna try to do something amazing, you're dead first. In, if you're just yep. playing the game to play the in-game stuff and not do like advanced battling or something, that is maybe the best strategy to have a, a high offense with a good variety and attack yep. types. And that's I just but, do everything super different, but everything's super powerful. Yeah, yeah, just power yeah, and power and diversity yep. and balance. But um, if that's you're if you were actually yeah, if you were doing a uh, you know like a serious competitive battling thing, you would Pretty get chewed up doing that. Yeah, and then I I've. I never actually I have gotten cheated, up doing that. <laughs> but I did go really, really dark for a little bit where I was breeding Pokemon and doing all the counting of abilities and doing some science with all that. That's, That's slippery I, slope, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, that is a slippery slope. I, I, when I got, because I remember I, I mentioned I didn't play Pokemon during the third generation and got back in the fourth generation. By that time, I had full internet access, so I naturally did some research along with while I was playing Diamond, and I was just blown away at the concepts of EVs and mm-hmm. IVs and uh, shoot, I don't know, and uh, like same type attack bonuses, Yo. which I didn't even know about when I was playing it the first time as a kid. I had no idea yeah, that Pokemon I- was that deep and esoteric. I 
it, I, it tur- turned out it had been like a hardcore game all along. It, I was listening to some podcast. I don't even remember what it was, but it was from uh, One Up back when that was a thing, and somebody had mentioned that, and it was, it was it, like my mind was blown. So like they don't have like it's not actually a stat that's really easy to see. Um, it, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, for all intents purposes, it doesn't exist. You have to do calculus to find out IVs. Practically. Yeah. And, and um, that's where I was just like, yeah, me being like kind of a math nerd, I was like, that's that's fascinating. So like, I I got really deep, and that's when I was that was the only time that I switched away from just being super powerful because I had this idea. I was like, as as every little kid is like, oh, I could play this and make a bunch of money. I can like retire playing Pokemon. Um, and so like that's where I was like, well, what is smart? And like that's where I started to get into like that more competitive mindset. But when it comes to the game, it's like, no, I'm just gonna I'm gonna burn you down. I mean, that's basically how I build a team. At the is is one representative of a different type for each slot at its max evolution that has a solid like attack, a solid couple of attacks of its own element, and maybe a couple wild cards in case they need them. But yeah, I'm, I I don't focus on the competitive aspect of Pokemon. Yeah, I'm, yeah same. I'm very. Very, I'm very much in, in it to win. Oh, and make sure that one Pokemon knows like Thunder Wave or something for legendary <laughs> captures. <laughs> yeah. Uh. yeah. So, I, which I, I actually, with the Jigglypuff for sleep? The best. Jigglypuff. The best. Oh. The best part. The best part of um playing um, uh, Soul Silver right now is that I'm training up um a Flaffy so I can have Ampharos in my final team, and um that. Any Pokemon that knows Static is like my automatic best friend because yes, I it still knows Thunder Wave, but sometimes I can just paralyze you by touching you. Yeah, that's that was that's brilliant. It's a useful ability. Uh, yeah. It saved me during um the Whitney gym leader battle, um because her mill tank paralyzed itself and. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I remember Whitney being really challenging playing her in gold. She's still she, challenging. Uh, <laughs> she, uh, I died. Because by then you don't really have any fighting Pokemon. Maybe you have a Machop. You can get, get Machop if you go if you go like looking, but it'll okay. build, you have to like yeah you have to level them up. Yeah, her her lot. mil her mil tank will ruin your day if you're not prepared for it. <laughs> what it sucks? Was, uh, it's been a long time. What sucks too is that I was training an Abra so I could get Kadabra. Yes! And um, and when Abra evolves at level sixteen, it learns confusion. But Abra leveled up to sixteen and then fainted during the gym battle, so oh. it didn't fall. And now I have to wait till it gets oh. to level twenty to learn Psybeam. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's like, so... oh, that stinks. That's well, the worst. Right. Can I tell you about my weird difficulties playing th- these games? Or oh, I will anyway. <laughs> so in, no, so Mike, in, I don't want you to talk. All right. Well, pl- playing Red, I mean, I've played Red and Blue probably the most out of any of these Pokemon games, so I'm well aware of the order of gym leaders and what each of them has. So even though I was at a slight disadvantage starting with Charmander, I caught a Pikachu just in just to prepare for Misty, and I caught a Nidoran and, evol- and turned it into a Nidto King just to prepare for Lieutenant Surge. And, uh, and so the, the first several gym leaders were, I was well prepared for, but, um, for platinum, I had, I had played diamond, but this is actually an, a new, uh, game for me. I, I, I bought platinum for cheap in, in uh, before this podcast and I'm playing it for the podcast and I had sort of forgotten what the order of gym leaders was. And I also decided I would have fun and I traded some level one baby Pokemon from diamond to my new platinum game. Uh, and so I can, you know, design this team ahead of time and run with the same team for the whole game. And I, I uh, was not as, you know, foresightful <laughs> as I was for this than I was for Red, because I had forgotten that the second gym is Grass, and I, I had a pepple up the water, the water starter, and the baby Pokemon I traded from Diamond would stop listening to me at level ten. So like when I when I tried to beat that Grass gym. One of those times, my level 13 or whatever uh, bag on fell asleep in the middle of the battle because I decided to take a nap instead of attack. <laughs> so i i did not have I did not have anything that was the right type for grass. I had totally forgotten that grass was the gym there, and, except for my bag on. I think had ember, and uh, so I was just getting. I after getting my ass kicked a couple times in a row, I just went back to the first town, caught a starly, which is like the bird 
base the basic bird Pokemon of yeah, right. uh, of of the fourth gen, and leveled it up just so I could have a flying Pokemon to kill the grass gym. It was, it was, but it was a very frustrating hour or two. Just having diso- disobedient Pokemon and my water starter getting knocked around and stuff, just because I had forgotten what the second gym was in Diamond, Pearl, Platinum. So I have made X really easy for me accidentally. Um, they they do this thing. So they've always had experience share, but <clears throat> X is the first time I'm aware of that. If you turn that on, it shares experience with your whole party, not just one Pokemon. Yes, and it, mm-hmm. and people get really mad about that because they think it makes the game too easy. I think it's brilliant. I think it's brilliant because it makes the game no longer boring, where you sub in everybody and just kind of roll through. Because they knew everybody was doing that anyways. Um, yeah, it so saves so much time. Yeah. yeah. And so basically, okay, basically by doing that, you can just use the right Pokemon for every situation and still yep. level up your party. Yep. Yeah. And they, and if you only use one, obviously they're they're leveling up at half experience, but they're still getting something. Uh, so it kind of cuts down the grinding. It it makes everything just more, more smooth. So it's more enjoyable. Um. But I I I like the first 151. I really do. Um, so I, I need a Haunter. I need a Kadabra. Like th- those are like two. Just they have to be there. Um, and on one of the routes, there's like a half a percent chance that you can get an Abra. So I wandered around for I I've probably played the game for a, I don't know a while. I think about 80% of my gameplay has been on that route um, before I got an Abra, and then I saw one, and it teleported before I could do anything. So I had to do it again. So, yeah, I have a really beefy party now. Um, but one of the interesting things was I was kind of surprised. If you usually do that for most games, I feel like you're kind of – you've ruined the game. You've just – you've so overleveled. I haven't felt like that yet for X. Um, I feel like they're doing enough kind of throwing things around and maybe my party's not exactly what I want it to be yet. Um, but it ramp. I think it balances the game because they know you have the experience share that it ramps up in difficulty quicker, mm-hmm. which, which Plus, I, I've the, enjoyed. The introduction of mega evolutions in X and Y, especially in the later game, um, kind yeah, that, of serves. That stuff seems also insane to, to me. I woof. If they're so cool. I'm it's like so you're excited. Super Saiyan. It's, I'm but, so excited. But once other trainers start getting Mega Evolutions, it's like their final Pokemon. It's it's almost always their final Pokemon, and it's almost kind of like this like mini boss within a boss fight, where it's like most, I think the most champ- of the gym trainers have Mega Evolutions. The gym train the gym trainers do not. Um, but um, the final Team Flare guy does. The champion does. Okay. And I think in the post game, a few more characters do. In um. In Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, actually, once you beat the Elite Four the first time, and if you go back, every single one of them has one. Oh, right. So, I, yeah, I, I don't know. Really a, yeah, I don't know a ton about the different Mega Evolutions, but I did hear that one of the new uh, Mega Evolutions from uh, Alpha and Omega was the first Pokemon ever banned at every single level Mega, of uh, Mega Rayquaza. And yeah, the, yeah, I think least- that's it. The reason because... for that is because every every mega every mega Pokemon has to hold on to its corresponding Mega Stone, and that's supposed to be what balances them is that they can't have hold items. Sure, okay. Rayquaza doesn't have that. Its Mega Evolution is an innate ability. <laughs> Whoa. Cool. So. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, it is. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so it's officially the brokest Pokemon in history. Yeah, and it's already like insanely powerful as it is. Yeah, no, I remember Rayquaza being a powerhouse before Mega Evolutions were a thing. Uh huh. So, that's nuts. Yeah, like it, it's yeah, it's it's the yeah, it's it's being banned is a very very good thing. Oh, now I <laughs> I mentioned for Platinum, I I traded some baby Pokemon from Diamond, but for I'm I'm being exploitative in a different way for Red, and uh. I, I had first heard about this uh, thing probably four or five years ago, even though it's been around for 15 or 20 years. But there's a glitch that you can use in red and blue to get any Pokemon in the game in a random battle. I love uh, it. Yeah, but basically it involves um, flying flying away like during a trainer encounter at a certain time, then go and fighting a 
Pokemon trainer of your choice, and based on the last Pokemon you defeat it, in that trainer battle, it'll set the random number generator to a certain value. And by manipulating what trainer you fight and what that value is, you can fight any Pokemon in the game's data. So if you use that trick to go to Cerulean City and fight a certain trainer that's in the north uh, section above that bridge, um, you can catch. You can basically set that and catch a Mew, which is the you know the yeah. event only red blue Pokemon. But it's, not, it's not supposed to be in the game data. Yeah, well, yeah. no, it's it, no, well, it, it is supposed it to be in the there. game data. Yeah, it's in the it's game data, be, but it's not supposed to be caught. Yeah, it's not supposed to be catchable. So I I did that because I had never um I I caught a Mew ages ago when I yep. wanted to do a a 151 playthrough for my copy of Blue, but for my copy of Red, I was like I I've never actually used Mew. I'll catch a Mew and level it up. So after I had gotten to the to the fourth gym, I caught a Mew, and now I'm gonna now I'm basically soloing the rest of the game, or I should say duoing the rest of the game with Mew and Snorlax. Because <laughs> so I, I mentioned this before, Snorlax is my favorite Pokemon of all time. I love that fat oh, guy. Oh, I'm running a, po uh, a Snorlax as well in yellow. It's oh, your yeah, spirit that's... Pokemon. Have you, have yes, you man. I just I just want to I just want to be a Snorlax, man. I'm just eating and sleeping all seen... day, and if you wake up, I'm grumpy and attack. That's I thought you wanted to be a Solosi. A Solosis. A Solosis. I don't want to be a Solosis. A Solosis is a weird psychic blob thing. I want to be a Snorlax, a big fat normal blob. blob. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that, that picture of Snorlax where it's like, it shows all of its sprites and character models from throughout the years. Oh, it's yeah, like, it, it it's slowly, Snorlax it's slowly years. sitting up. <laughs> yeah, it took yeah. Snorlax 20 years to get out of bed. <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. Because in, in Red and Blue, he's like, it's like, well, I mean, Red and Green are the the Pokemon's games that we never got we got their updated version i say we by everyone other than japan um but he starts out lying down and every with every generation his pose is slightly curling upwards like he's doing the world's slowest sit up or something and he's got uh, some massive abs just hanging yeah. there for <laughs> just hanging there for 20 it's, years yeah. how tough a pokemon it is i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> yeah it's so uh, yeah yeah, whatever. So I love Snorlax. I've always loved Snorlax, and I'm beating Red. Uh, now that I have a Snorlax and a Mew that I got basically around the same time, I'm just going to beat the rest of the game with them. Nice. Yeah. nice. Not not quite as broken a glitch, but um, back when I played Coliseum on the GameCube, um, because every battle in Pokemon Coliseum is a double battle, there was a really weird item dupe glitch that they had where um, if you switched an item's position around in your menu and then canceled out, and then did another action, and then um, tried to use the item with your second kit Pokemon, then um, it would keep the item in your inventory. So I used that for to have infinite Master Balls. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Which yeah. was fantastic. Why can't we have more Master Balls? Why can there only be one Master Ball? I know. Make, just make like There's a way to get there's second Master Balls. There's clearly the not. To in, yeah, in remember right. in gold you could get more by having the lottery, but it's a uh, and uh, God, this is a little weird. When I um was farming Pokemon in my <laughs> copy of Fire Red and Emerald to send to my copy of Diamond, I would play the game. I would play the game super fast, get a Master Ball, and then um attach like ha attach the Master Ball to one of my Pokemon and uh, send, it, send oh, over yeah. the po send over the Pokemon holding the Master Ball to right. Diamond. So I ended up they, using five or six Master Balls in that copy of Diamond. That's they, solid. They made they made sure that you couldn't do that anymore with Pokemon Bank because they yeah. introduced this new the Pro, the Pokemon Bank app for um for X and Y so you could trans keep your Pokemon um in there. But um it doesn't let them keep hold items, so no Mega Stone duping sure. and no Master Ball duping. That's probably fair, but uh, it's fair. Probably. I just. That, that's how I'm I got most of the legendary Pokemon in Diamond. <laughs> I, I was just annoyed that I I, had, I restarted a file and I wanted my Charizard X again, but I had to get the Mega Stone back. <laughs> so speaking of kind of abnormalities or just other ways you can play the game, Domly on the board said asked if we were going to do anything special while playing through, and he or she asked if any of us were going to do uh, Nuzlocke challenges, which I have no idea what that even is. So if one of you could explain that. Right. Um, so, Peter, do you want to go or should I? You can. You can go. I, I'll. Right. I'll follow up. <laughs> okay. Now, I. I might have a few details of this wrong. Nuzlocke is the name of either a. It was either a forum poster or a blogger 
that uh, decided on a whim to play a Pokemon game in an unusual way, and he liked it so much that he did a webcomic about it. And then that webcomic describing the Nuzlocke challenge, as it were, became popular among other Pokemon communities, and now it's a thing that some people do. Basically, you have your starting Pokemon, and whenever you enter a new area, whether it's a, a cave or a, a route or something, you're only allowed to keep the first... You're only allowed to catch and keep the first Pokemon you encounter. Whether so if you a, don't catch that Pokemon, you're not allowed to catch anything in that area, then? Yes. And you're not allowed to go to a Pokemon Center to heal your Pokemon. You only can catch and keep and use the ones that you, uh, the first one you encounter, and you can only heal them with items or uh, with Pokemon abilities like Recover or Soft Boiled. So basically, that really limits what your team can be and really makes it a very high risk because you can't, um, you can't use a Pokemon Center to recover. But can and... you go to a Pokemon Center to use the computer? I I think so. Um, so well, it, so because, you so you can yeah. so you can clear out room in your party for new Pokemon that you can possibly catch in in a new area. But I I, I don't remember all the specifics of it. Using if they yeah, if using, they faint, you have to get rid of them. That, oh, oh yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, if, that's if they, the the gist of it. It's dirty. Wow. That's right. That's really which is dirty. Ins- which I want to say is insane because people have done Nuzlocke challenges of games like of the GameCube games, Colosseum and XD, where you have a finite roster of Pokemon. You can't catch wild Pokemon in Colosseum. There's only like 47 like shadow Pokemon that you oh, can right. catch yeah, plus you your two like, starters. That's right. You like steal them from the evil criminals in that game. Yeah. And that's people weird. have Nuzlocke that game. Oh, wow. I, so they Iron Man challenge it, basically. I like that. No, that it's like, yeah. I, I did a Nuzlocke um, using a guide on some GameFAQs forums, I think, when I uh, when I was in that crazy Pokemon rut in like <laughs> o, in like from like 06 to 07. Right. And right. Um, I did it on Pokemon Fire Red, which was the game I had kept restarting to, you know, farm starters and stuff. And it, it's just stressful. I, it sounds I, insane. I, I used recommendations of the forum goers, so I think I had probably an easier time doing the Nuzlocke than for certain other games and other combinations. Right. But I didn't like it. That's not why I play Pokemon. I play Pokemon to catch a bunch of stuff and make a powerful party and and beat the game, not to not to you know not to just struggle like like with like blood in my mouth as I play the game. Yeah, that sounds dreadful. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't necessarily recommend a Nuzlocke challenge, but a lot of people in Pokemon communities really like doing them. So, short yeah, answer for Domly is no. We are not. <laughs> that is accurate. Wow, yeah, that sounds terrible. Um, yeah, I'm just going to be... I have, like, my fingers crossed that I can just finish Pokemon in a month. I, I don't need... I don't need the head stress of that. I'm at the fifth or sixth gym for both of the two that I'm for the two that I'm playing, so I I won't have any trouble beating him in the next week or two. Yeah, they're not terribly long games, thankfully. No. Even if there's a bit of time spent um grinding to build up your team. Well, and that's but, that's the issue I have is I just get sidetracked. Like, it, oh, you, go ahead, go ahead. Like we, I I made I made the complaint I guess earlier that like almost all games all the games have so much similarities that it, it feels the same. But it, there is something just fantastic about you're going on an adventure and you're you're wandering around and you're seeing this world, you're interacting with it, and it. That's why I like playing a new one every time. Is I do go on a new adventure, and and you you know fight new gym leaders and overthrow right. a new criminal organization even though you're 10. And it, it's the same thing every time I play it. I was like, why would this mom let me leave? Some old guy gave me a computer and let me just wander around. Wander like, the world. That, like, that sounds terrible. Every time I make that joke, every time I laugh at it, uh, somehow that's not getting less funny. And At least at least in black and white, you're 16. Yeah. Like, I think every Pokemon game is actually child endangerment version. <laughs> <laughs> but like there's there's something special about that I, I don't even think it's keyed into like my nostalgia for the series it's just like going on an adventure like there's just something so pure about that that is so enjoyable so to finish like these games always like i, I look at like how long to beat like the website and whatnot and like i like the time i was like no i'm not even close to that I, i'm always like double that time because i just i i wander and i get lost 
for me, and I'm thinking back to um, what Mike said about finding Mew. I remember, like, I mean, back in the day, like, finding Mew and finding these legendary Pokemon. Like, that's the kind of thing that, like, is, like, you know, playground talk for kids. Mm -hmm. Like, swapping secrets. Like, yep. And it's that I think that's a, that's a feeling that we've kind of lost in the modern modern age, and not not to sound like overly nostalgic or anything, but it's and it's one of those things where like there is there's a whole, whole these theories about like how how to catch Mew and where these other like hidden Pokemon that is is there a Mew three because there's a Mew two like Mew, is there a Mew three or things like that like <laughs> you know and it, I mean it it doesn't it does it sounds stupid now but it's like. That was that was kind of thing. I think, and I think Pokemon still like. I think part of why it's so popular today still is it still maintains some of that like I guess magic. If that oh, makes any. Sense. I mean, speaking of like talk like at recess and whatnot. Remember Missing Go? Yeah, Missing Go. Yeah, missing Go. No. That yeah. number. Yeah. Like that blew everybody's mind. It was just one of those things. Like it, now today, like that that goes on. Like I mean, there's there's a long long page of it on Bulbapedia. Like you can just figure it out. But like back then, like. Mm -hmm. We had no idea, and then you'd have you'd have your one friend that caught it and it like erased his game file. And uh -huh. So then you're like, well, I have it too. Like, should I get rid of it? Do I have to put it in the computer? Like, you're freaking out, and it there <laughs> that was like fantastic. Yeah, I um, know. And then like I remember when I saw my first shiny Pokemon. Oh like, yeah. When like it, I think it was a shiny, like the guy had a, a shiny furret or something, and then like I had no idea what, why it, what, why its color was 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 different. I think I got a and shiny Cubone. At one point, I have, I have a, I don't, I don't, I never, I've never caught a shiny, but I have a shiny Requesa thanks to event distributions. <laughs> Yay! I, but, um, a, I mean, I definitely have a shiny Gyarados in my, in my. Uh, Gyarados. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Why? Why do you? Why? Why do all of yours come out weird? <laughs> Maybe you're the one that's having them come out weird, but uh, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I, I, um, I never. I, n I stopped watching the show so long ago and only read the names of these Pokemon. I probably mispronounce all of them. <laughs> uh, but the um, I there's you can get a shiny red Gyarados. Gyarados. Um, Gyarados. There you go. That, Gyarados. That in um, it's either it's either oh it's either Heart Gold it's, Soul Silver or uh, or Diamond Pearl. Yeah, it's Heart Gold Soul Silver. Yeah, yeah, because uh, be, there's they give you one to catch, and I it's, I have it's in my team. I have a shiny. Uh, oh shoot! I, I have one or two shinies in that diamond file with like 470 Pokemon in it, but I haven't even encountered a shiny in this run of platinum that I'm doing. The the chances of actually encounter, and this is another one of those things that's been like broken down by the community to the mathematical level. The the chances of encountering a shiny in the wild is something like one in eight thousand. Yeah, um, I've never uh, caught one. Yeah, I was going to say with Marcos, I've never gotten one. Um, like, if the internet didn't exist, I would call you all liars. Yeah, you know, I should do a cyber into YouTube, and they'll, they'll, they'll prove you're wrong. Or yeah. go into yeah. Serapy.net, and you'll it'll show you the, the shiny color scheme of any Pokemon you look up. No, no, no I, I've seen it. But just yeah. with the internet, I oh, would okay. never have it. Was, so, to get my, uh, Abra, Abra, fuck. I go, Mike, you're just ruining everything. <laughs> <laughs> Am I making you rethink how every Pokemon you say? In, my, in the back of difference. my mind, I'm thinking, like, how would Mike say this? I'm like, I, I have to not say it like that, and then I say something no. even more screwed up. Repeat, um, that, repeat after me. Chico Rita. <laughs> Chico Rita. So, while Chico I was trying to get Rita. my uh, Abra... Uh, <laughs> Your Kadibra? <laughs> while I was trying to catch that Pokemon, uh, that's the area where you're supposed to find it for the, the shiny. So, like, I followed the same pattern that you... Because it was the same, I think, I don't know. But I followed, the, like, all those guys to be able to get it. I was like, I don't even want a shiny one. I just want a regular one. Why can't I get a stupid regular one? I'm trying to manipulate the random number generator in yeah. a certain way. It's, I, that, that is all beyond me. Yeah. I don't I don't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that? Nope. nope some, people time do, for that. But, yeah, some people do. Some people do, but they, I, you only find them on Pokemon forums on the internet. Yeah. Um... Yeah, yeah. So that's Pokemon. Um, I know we kind of just skirted around the edges of what is Pokemon. Um, I think I think next episode we'll actually kind of delve into more so our playthroughs, our stories about like kind of what happened. Um, I, I really really want to delve into what makes a perfect team for everybody. Um, so we'll do that on the second episode when everybody has a chance to for sure get what they're 
Our party playthrough of Red is basically a lot of you Snorlax don't used body slam. Snorlax oh. used body oh. slam. Oh. Oh. Snorlax used rest. Oh. See, before I got Use Snorlax, I would do uh, Wiggly, Wiggly Tough, put someone to sleep with singing. And then would rest beside the person, take a nap together, and then wake up and then body slam them to death. <laughs> I think in Soul Silver they made it so that um, you can find larva um, larvitar in um, the Safari Zone, so you don't you can't just cut you don't just have to wait until you get to the last area of the game. So I'm raising a Tyranitar if possible. Larvitar is one of the Pokemon I traded from Diamond. I have to one Platinum. of those. So it's but it's rock ground, so it got it's got it got vine whipped to death over and over in that oh. grass gym. Oh, that's so sad. So yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, my plan for uh, platinum is to have a team of uh, the, the fully evolved Piplup, then a Tyranitar, a Salamence, and a Jolteon. Nice. I had a Tyran. I, I had some sort of fossil T Rex dinosaur, but now he's not in my party. How did that happen? Oh, that's... That, that's uh oh shoot tyrantrum tyrantrum is what yeah that's, that's what it was T-Rex, that's, that's yeah. rock dragon well, i have Tyrantar no idea where he went rock dark well that's confusing he used, he used to be in my main party i swapped him out for a uh zoroark i think which I, I i was playing a multiplayer pokemon with my cousin over christmas break um and um but the Zor- zoroark um changes itself to mimic the last pokemon in your team um, oh, Whoa. so was that so, in black and white? Because that, that sounds familiar. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. a black and white. It's a Gen Five Pokemon. It's just such a fun fake out tactic um, in multiplayer. It's not really like effective all that often, but like so, I always have it mimic my Charizard. So he goes to for um a water move, and my Zoroark knows I'm Grass Knot, which um trips heavy Pokemon and does a crap ton of damage. So he went for his Blastoise Grass Knot. <laughs> I, I remember wow. Zoroark, but when I played White 2, I beat the whole game with uh, Rayuniclus, which is an evolved Solosis, and Excadrill. Right. <laughs> That's fair. Ex- Excadrill, that thing is, that is an OP Pokemon in Gen 5. I love that thing. It's like, it's like a it's... Diglett on steroids. <laughs> but yeah, so we'll delve all into that in the second episode. Um... But we definitely want you guys to jump onto the boards. We, I'd love to hear what everybody else's favorite Pokemons are, what their favorite party is, how they pick their starting Pokemon, all of that. So if you guys could jump on the boards, which is at RPGFan.com. Snorlax. Charmander, Char. We should stop this before it gets any worse. So, <laughs> yeah, you guys can go to the boards and do that. I, I don't even know what to say anymore. Um... <laughs> As always, you guys can uh, send your emails to retro at rpgfan.com. Jump on those boards. Go on iTunes or wherever else you're listening to this to. Uh, give us those positive reviews. We love five-star reviews. And I actually like the comments for the reviews even more because I love hearing you back. And then we are only doing two episodes this month because of some personal stuff for me. So we had to condense down the month. So I'm going to announce what we're doing for February now because that's kind of confusing and weird and awesome. We are doing an indie month, and I do that in quotations. If you couldn't see that. So instead of doing one game for the whole month, we're doing one game per podcast. And we're going to have three different games during the course of the month, during which we're going to play Gone Home to the Moon. Ah, to the Moon. It's and pronounced to the Moon. I, I, I was thinking of Pokemon. That, so I've was, only seen that word read that that word, you know, in print before. So I don't really know how to pronounce it. So but I'm yeah, pretty it's sure it's hard. to the Mew. I, I had hard. Pokemon on the brain, so I was thinking to the Mew. Like, that's not... I don't know why wants to go there. Um, to the Moon, and then uh, Juniper's Not. So we'll have a different cast for each game. We'll each be doing a full playthrough, and we'll already be in the game coming in. We'll kind of do a wrap-up thoughts. Um, something a little different with the, the new year, and I, we thought it would be kind of fun. But yeah, that's going to do it for Pokemon this time. Please come back for a second. Go around. Bye, everyone. Bye, friends. Bye, friends. Adios. Adios. Adios.